Let's call this meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? <coughs> Boyd? Here. Goldbeck? Halajian? Here. Hatwood? Here. McNary? Roper? Here. Simmons? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone, has everyone had a chance to approve the meeting minutes? Are there any comments or corrections to be made? If I have none, I'd motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved. Uh, on to number three, agenda. Staff, you had a change to make on the agenda? Uh, yes. Staff requests that the commission review continuing matters after the main commission items. Well, the, the, we move the presentation and some of the other elements up for the people yes. here. Yes, please. Okay. So we'll move commission item six. We'll swap six and five for each other. Thank you. A motion to approve the amended agenda. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is approved. No items on the consent calendar. So we will go on to the next item, which will be commission item A. Assistant Director Sanchez is going to provide a status update for the producer's dairy project. Thank you. Following the city council meeting that was held on March 22nd. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Again, my name is Mike Sanchez. I'm the Assistant Director for Development Resource Management, and I am the staff member assigned to the uh, Producers, Dairy Pro Producers Dairy Project, as you're well aware, located on Belmont Avenue between Ferger and Roosevelt. As many of you are aware, uh, this matter came before council back in late March. Uh, after a long, considerable debate, the council opted to continue the matter in efforts to have the administration, the mayor's office, work with the Jihadi family to try and find an alternative site. For those of you familiar with the, uh, the details of that meeting, uh, one of the things uh, folks kept talking about during that meeting was the, uh, the covenant that was run over the property. So, um, so as opposed to the council taking any action on the item that night, uh, the option continued with a period of 90 days, which has been the middle of June, in order to allow the administration to work Body family to find an alternative site that will hopefully find, you know, solve the issue once and for all. And as of this date, uh, I'm not aware of any uh, potential sites, and I have not been part of those discussions with the mayor's office, but if something does break loose, uh, we'll certainly get together with all parties involved and let them know what the next steps are in the process, and I will certainly let this commission know of that, uh, of any updates that are forthcoming. And with that, I'll just answer any questions the commission might have. So are we safe to say then that the property is safe from? I, mean, I would never say never, but I think, uh, you know, if you're at the hearing or uh, listen to the hearing, the council was, I mean, the council was pretty uh, adamant about not wanting to uh, move forward on the item that was before them. So they opted to choose the pass that they did that night. So um, I would say never say never, but I think uh, it's very important that, that all parties uh, Keep informed as to what the next steps will be. And the family seems pretty. Uh, um, I haven't talked to the family directly, but the uh, um, my my understanding is that the administration is working with the family to try and find these alternative sites. And uh, um, I think there's uh, more of a sense of urgency now to try and get something resolved because uh, who knows what will happen if it comes back. So. Uh, but I think there is more of a sense of an urgency. So I think uh, they're looking at sites, uh, you know, maybe sites they've looked at before, I don't know, but uh, they certainly want to uh, try and find uh, a win-win situation, obviously. Okay. If possible, I know the mayor has a task force, but if uh, he would like to roll in somebody from our uh, historic preservation group, I think that'd be well received and help, help projects like that along as they, I know they're probably dealing with quite a few projects. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, 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 we can certainly relay that to the administration. 
Uh, but if there is an alternative site, uh, then uh, then the other issue is going to be what happens to the remaining sure. site. Yeah. And I think that's where perhaps this committee might uh, get involved a little bit more. I think that's something that uh, you know needs some discussion and uh, what the what the is at is an alternative site for that one. So, but until such time, uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern, and we'll, I'll certainly keep this committee advised accordingly as things develop. Questions. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. Uh, Painless, huh? <laughs> Painless, huh? <laughs> you know, before you go, to, I should open up to the public yeah. for comment. So. Yeah. Mike, you mind hanging around just for a little sure. bit? Uh, I'd like to open up to the public if there's any comments or questions on the Paducah update. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Anything else? Anything to add? There's no action item required for this right. item, so uh, free to go, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate Thanks, <Mike>. it. <clears throat> All right, let's go on to Commission Item B. The owner of the Laya home has requested that their property located at 634 through 640 Van Ness Avenue be considered for listing local register of historic resources. The Elia home was owned and occupied by the Elia family, an Armenian immigrant family beginning in 1910 until the death of Anne Elia in 2001. Sam and Ruth Elia constructed the two-story duplex residence in 1915 <coughs> with the intention of occupying the first story unit 636 and providing housing for the children in the second story unit Six at in unit 634, after <coughs> which it would be rented out. The two-story duplex residence is wood-framed and exhibits elements of the <coughs> and colonial revival architectural styles, which include the hipped roof, the symmetrical facade, the porches that span the full width of the facade, and the Doric columns seen in support <coughs> of the porches, and as a decor decorative element of the built-in dining cabinet. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you. Okay, so a unique original interior feature of the <coughs> duplex uh, residence is uh, the door opening mechanism for the main entry at the top of the stairway in the second story unit, 634. I got to try it. It was pretty fun, and it still, still works. <laughs> <laughs> um, by 1935, Sam had partnered with his son Joe in a painting contracting firm called Sam Elia and Son, and were operating out of the newly constructed one-story storefront commercial building at 640 Van Ness Avenue. Sam retired in 1951, at which point Aram's walk and watch and clock shop began renting and operating out of the storefront commercial building and continued to until 1969, when the building was vacated. The one-story storefront commercial building was constructed of brick and exhibits elements of the Art Deco architectural style, which include the smooth wall surface, the use of chevrons and other stylized and geometric motifs as decorative elements on the facade, and projections which provide a vertical emphasis. The Laya home is located uh, towards the center of the 60-plus block neighborhood of Armenian Town, as shown in red. Fresno's Armenian population peaked as a result of the Armenian genocide between 1915 and 1923 by the Ottoman Empire, forcing the immigration of many Armenian refugees. The Armenian town neighborhood contains only fragments of Fresno's original Armenian community. Armenian town initially developed as a mixed-use neighborhood, primarily with residential use, but naturally developed into a mixed-use neighborhood with diminishing pockets of residential use and growing patches of commercial use, especially along Van Ness Avenue. <coughs> Credit is owed to Dennis Elia for these family photos, which show the Elia family, uh, family members, as well as some character-defining features of the home and its change over time. Uh, starting from the top left, Sam and Ruth Elia pose in front of their home during the late 1920s. 
Ruth Elias stands in the location where the one-story storefront commercial building would be constructed. Their family dog sunbathes and keeps a lookout on the front porch. Anne gives her dog Pepper a treat on the front porch. A family gathers to celebrate in the dining room in 1968 where you can see the original built-in dining cabinet. And the Elias family pictured with Sam and Ruth centered and surrounded by their children and grandchildren. The Elia home is greater than 50 years of age, retains historic integrity, and meets local register criterion one because it is associated with the early development of the Armenian town neighborhood and works toward honoring a rich segment of Fresno's early ethnic history, as well as criterion three because it has distinction as a live work property type, specifically as a residence with a storefront commercial addition. Because the Elia home appears to be eligible for the local register of historic resources, staff recommends that the commission approve the request for designation and forward to city council. <coughs> no questions, but this is one of those properties that I think most people would assume was already yeah. on the historic register since it's such a prominent uh, building and, and it just seems like this would have been there, but happy to see another element of old Armenian town um, and it could be designated as well. It just adds to the, the fabric. I love the fact that it was like it was it's always been a duplex. It was it's not right. like the stately home <laughs> converted sometime in the sixties. It was planned that way and then you know the sh little shop added on the front of it. It's just it's very good. It's very, very cool. Questions for staff? I'd like to open up to the public for comment. If the owner is here and would like to make a comment, I'd love to hear from them too. I'm the owner. Um, yeah, sounds great. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool house. Uh, myself and my partner on this, um, it's like four of us. Philip, could. Would you mind coming you up? Come, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That way the mic will catch you for the record. Yeah. So myself and three of, so my name is Philip Cleaver. Um, I am a part owner of Ashaka LLC, which purchased this home at 634 to 640 Van Ness 93721. Um, yeah, we walked it about a year ago um, with Aaron Blair used to work for the downtown foundation um, and it was it was kind of it's in a decrepit condition like but we fell in love with it it's it's definitely has it has great bones it's stood the test of time somehow when everything else around it is is gone for the most part on that block so yeah we have good we have big plans for it we're gonna do some good stuff and honestly I'd like for more people to just enjoy the fact that something like that remains and that at the end of downtown. So. Yeah, it just seems like you're, it seems like there's going to be a lot that's going to build up around it, and that is going to be one extremely unique piece in that area of town. Yeah, w yes, totally. I totally agree with you. Um, hopefully, we can get some. There's a, there's only a few property owners around that end of that downtown. So if they can somehow get it together to actually do something, you know, I think it'd be a great area for, not you know for more residences, apartments, or condos, or as well as kind of some, it's a walkable neighborhood. It's right down the street from Bitwise, then you go to Hopper K, and Zach's Brewery, and Tioga. Like it's just, it's something that can start, you know, if there's more people like us who are willing to actually get something going, I think it's gonna be good. Uh, forthcoming announcements yet or is that still sort of in the works as to what it's all in the works okay, yeah fine. no it's all <laughs> yes sir is it a, how is it uh, how is it structured is it in good condition it's in fantastic condition um, I personally did some some exploratory demo um, because we're gonna have to do a lot of um, sheer uh, you know some seismic upgrades and stuff like that we plan on converting to a commercial building unfortunately it's just not it's not a it just, it seems like the best use for it is something that's open to the public, you know, something like that. Um, 
So we're going to convert it to a commercial occupancy type building. We know that there's some things that come with that, but it's there's a lot of cities that have houses like this that you can go to for businesses. You know, I mean, fortunately Fresno does. I don't think Fresno has enough of that. I love going to to, to see houses that are you know like this and other you know sip a brew or a coffee in, or in a in a little you know historic house patio. Mm -hmm. Like that's awesome. So I think there's. There's a lot of potential for this house. It could be anything, but go ahead. I want to make sure you're aware that if you're listed, you can use the state historic building code. You know all that, right? Yes, sir. Very good. That's why we're here, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, we were going to be subject to some of those, uh, the historic building, uh, regulate whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, it just seemed like a no-brainer. Tell other people. <laughs> yeah, it gets a bad rap, right? I mean, we're not, yeah. we don't actually have big plans for changing the outside. I mean, I think it could use a good paint job, but as far as keeping the overall um, way it looks, it, we're going to keep the same. I'm not actually, I'm not even going to take off the siding. We're just going to fix it, paint it. Actually, there used to be color on it. It hasn't always been white. You know, you actually go down and there's this really bright shade of blue, like sky blue. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. So, I, hopefully, we can get it, we can get it uh, fixed up in a in a year sometime. It's going to take some time to pull all pull it all together. So. Thanks for being one of the crea crea uh, creative and courageous <laughs> ones. Yes, <laughs> right. Any other comments from the public? I think it's really good to see that Fresno is starting to preserve some of their older Do you want to come up? You come here. Yeah. <laughs> if we could get your name and address too, please. My name is Sally McCoy, and I've been in Fresno since 1969. Um, and I love these old homes. I think they're magical. You do too. They have have charm, and class, and so many of the homes that they've built since the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, except for some of the newly new and modern ones, are just boxes. They all have 11 windows in them, and they're nothing. And we've got places like this, or like my little magic place. Um, and I think those should be preserved, because once they're gone, they're gone. And if you ever go back east, there's tons of homes around, and people have kept them up, and they're living in them, and they're loved. And we see this part of Fresno it's just kind of going in the dumps. And I hate to see that. Um, I think if we can preserve some of these older places, then we'll see that love for that come back and new homes going in around it or businesses or whatever it may be, hopefully will flourish and continue to do well. So that's my two cents about your place. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Am I out of here now? Temporary, oh, you'll, have, just you'll, stay. you'll have to come back. But, well, <laughs> unless someone back. else wants to come. <laughs> <laughs> come on up, please. Thank you. I didn't mean to speak on this issue. Uh, uh, Jeremy Clark, 573 East Terrace. Uh, I work near there. I take walks near that house. I think it's wonderful just because it's one of these places where there's unfortunately a higher number of, of homeless individuals wandering down that way. And it's it's one of those homes that I just could see losing to a fire or something like that if it wasn't maintained. So, congrats. That's, that's great. Exactly. You likely just saved a couple of critically important part of downtown Fresno. Well, maybe, you know, Fresno can help me get it, get it together. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost some money, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll bring it back into commission. Final comments? Thank you for bringing it to this commission, Robert. I'd like to make a motion that we approve staff's recommendation and move forward to the designation. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion's passed. <coughs> Item number C. Here you go. 
A uh, property owner, Sally McCoy, has requested that her residence located at 1619 North Adeline <coughs> Avenue be considered for designation as a heritage property. The McCoy residence was constructed in 1918, making it one of the earliest homes to be constructed within the high addition subdivision of the Tower District. The residence was constructed of clay tile block and exhibits elements of the French eclectic Italian Renaissance French Eclectic, Italian Renaissance, and Craftsman architectural styles, among which are the side gabled roof, open overhanging eaves and with exposed rafter tails on a rear portion of the roof, and the presence of vertically oriented vents beneath all gables. Its unique character defining feature is the off-center pop-up OG pent roof over the entry. In addition to this original character defining feature, the main entry consists of an original wood framed Palladian inspired composition that includes an arched wood batten door covered by a metal grapevine screen door that is flanked by small side light windows with three di divided lights each. All door and window openings are original and wood framed and all windows along the primary elevation and on the eastern portion of the north side elevation are original multi-paned wood casement windows with single pane glass and metal hardware. Extant original interior features include wood flooring, plaster walls with wood picture frame moldings, wood frame doorways and windows, and wood panel doors with metal hardware and crystal doorknobs, as well as built-in wood furniture and a clawfoot bathtub. The McCoy residence meets the definition of a heritage property as a resource which is worthy of preservation because of its historical, architectural, or aesthetic merit, because it is an early example of residential development in the Tower District and exhibits elements of the French eclectic, Italian Renaissance, and craftsman architectural styles. <coughs> because the McCoy residence appears to meet the definition of a heritage property, staff recommends that the commission approve the request for designation. not um, local register. Heritage because um, I could not find enough evidence to show that the property embodied an architectural style or property type and did not find it to be uh, distinct enough in that way. Yeah, we actually, um, Corona looked at this last, last year uh, with that same conclusion, that's why uh, heritage at least at a minimum until we can you know uh, find some more uh, history about the house I mean a hundred years old it's got to have some history in there so it's a uh, it's just hard to find <laughs> okay. it's this, a lovely property. The, the architectural style is probably indicative of a lot of homes down there where it's mm -hmm. there's kind of a mixture of a lot mm -hmm. of a mixture of different elements into a single home instead of one mm -hmm. classic statement element, right? And right. that's what I remember my recollection kind mm -hmm. of in the area. Nice okay. patchwork yeah. of architectural styles. Eclectic. That I think that's an indication of sort of architecture without architects. It's uh, probably was designed by a home builder who knew enough to do something that looked lovely but didn't have the kind of theoretical underpinnings of a you know well-defined style, and that's mm -hmm. probably what that was. Yeah, yeah, and the probably one of the first in its neighborhood. I mean, it's it was there as there's the lot being developed, you know, which is really unique for for that uh, area. There's not a whole lot of hundred-year-old homes right there. This fall within, we just call it sort of the dotted line of that Adeline Palm potential district. I don't think this property is included within that within that potential district. Although I didn't look further into that district for this meeting, so <laughs> I, I could uh, could do that. But the good thing about nominating a property as a heritage property is it's a step toward local register if that is a possibility. So um, we at least want to move yeah. it forward. Yeah. Or in the Mills Act or heritage properties. <clears throat> um, my recollection is it's just local register, 
but they would be eligible for the uh, preservation mitigation fund, um, which was established last year. But the lighthouse is would be eligible. Correct. For those actions. Yep. Okay. That's right. Would I get the benefit from the historic preservation? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Right. Comments from public. Of course. <laughs> um, I brought some notes I'll kind of refer to. I purchased the home in 96 from a gentleman who said that when he moved into the house, it was pretty much falling apart. Um, his wife sat in the bathtub and looked up and saw the stars and cried. He said, sat in the bathtub and looked up and says, oh my gosh, this is so cool. He has restored much of the home. It has been kept in its original style. It still has the original built-ins. Original wood floors in the living room have all been maintained. Um, it's about 101 years old now. I have absolutely loved it. It's a magical place that's got a lot of warmth and it's, it's a happy home. Mm -hmm. The back bedroom has six windows that face west and six windows that face north. And you can open all those windows and you get wonderful breezes in the evening that came in there. But it must have been important to the builder, thinking, ah, oh, when we go to bed, we want it cool. Um, it still has the original chimney in the middle of the house where at one time there was a wood stove and you could see where it tied into that chimney and also where the gas stove that came along later tied into that chimney for venting. Um, I remodeled the kitchen in 19, or 2009, and we went back to the lath and plaster because the kitchen was not pretty anymore. Um, we kept cabinets where they belonged. We put the stove back where the original stove was. Um, and we, it, at one time, it had a greenhouse window in the kitchen area. They had somebody had just cut the opening and done it and taken some of the um, the bricks of the house they'd widened an area and there was a hole they'd stuff newspaper in that hole from the 60s that was from the 60s because dates were on the newspaper um, my contractor went in rebuilt that with brick brought it up to the level and and kept everything in theme of the whole entire house we have replaced the house windows in the rest of the house other than that front and east side, or the east and north side, with um, dual pane windows. It's a home that's lived in. From my understanding, it has probably been through time, at times, a rental home. Somebody bought it and rented it out. It's only two bedrooms. At one time, it was one bathroom. Um, previous to my purchasing the home, that one bathroom had been made smaller. They kept the original wood cloth or steel clawfoot tub is in the bathroom, um, and that integrity is there. And then there's this little tiny closet-sized master bath that has a shower that all you can do is turn around in. <laughs> Closets are small. It's really good for getting rid of clothes. Um, but it's just such a delightful little home. Um, when we redid the kitchen, there were like four or five layers of floors just on top of each other. We went down to the original. It still had in that stuff all the original linoleum. The old 1918 linoleum was still in that house. Um, it has crown molding, high ceilings. It's just, and it's a place that's been loved a lot. It's a happy place. Um, I think it needs to be, it deserves to be recognized. It was probably built in that area before most homes around it, just because of the date it was built. There's nothing else around it that's of that same period. They're all 1920s, 1930s, 1950s and 60s are the homes that are around it. So at one time, it had to sit on this little piece of property out there all by itself for several years before the rest of the area was built and filled in. Um, I think that alone, just the fact that it's been there forever is important to preserve. And I would hate to see someone come in and change 
the charm of the front of it or any of it. For whatever reason, I'd like to see it preserved. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents. Thank you very I much. I love that little house. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right? Do you have any, anybody have any questions about it? I won't go far till you let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the or comments from the public? Hearing none, we'll bring it back in. This is really what it's all about. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm happy, uh, mm -hmm. friend of Sally's, and uh, just happy to see her home uh, get to this stage, and uh, and hope that uh, uh, folks do recognize it and. Sally's ready to get a plaque on this thing. Yeah, she's <laughs> ready to show it. So I'm excited for her, and it's a lovely home. I've, I've been by it uh, several times and just a, a gem of the Tower District. So um, I, uh, I hope we can vote tonight as a heritage property. That is a motion. I would like I'll, I'll second that as a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that. Touch and go. Touch and go. That are massive and beautiful and people of importance live in them. This is the one little home that I have for in here. Thank you for that. Thank you. 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 All right, let's move on to item B. All right, the California Office of Historic Preservation, the OHP, has requested review and comment from the City of Fresno Historic Preservation Commission <coughs> regarding the nomination of Hotel Fresno to the National Register of Historic Places. Um, city, city staff has drafted a letter in support of the nomination for the commission. The OHP has requested written comment, preferably at least 15 days prior to the State Historical Res Resources Commission meeting on Thursday, May 17, 2018, at which time action will be taken on the nomination. Staff recommends that the commission review and approve a drafted letter addressed to the Office of Historic Preservation regarding the nomination of Hotel Fresno to the National Register of Historic Places and provide additional comment if needed. Uh, I had a couple questions. On the, the paragraph, the third paragraph, looks like we're correcting, making some corrections. Uh, Yes, I found um, some clarifications that were needed it, in the nomination. Are we trying to make three clarifications? Is that kind of how it breaks down? Um, one was on? Uh, one, yeah. one discusses the overall um, division of the building, okay. and then the other one um, clarifies uh, the, st the structure of the base or the ground floor um, saying that it's not um, only two floors but it's a it's a ground floor with a second partial second story right. gallery that overlooks okay, so, two spaces. so two things okay I can make that more clear to you yeah I was just wondering if it needed to say like first and second yeah. or you know, one, one and two, two or something yeah. like that um, mm -hmm. that was my only just so it's crystal mm -hmm. clear sure. on what we're trying to correct or <coughs> in, 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 in the other document. Yeah, I assume you want me to sign that. <laughs> that, that would be ideal. Okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, you, with that attachment, you included there's a meeting on May, May 17th regarding this. Is yes. that something that we attend? Um, or is it just happening and I don't think you're required to attend. Um, I believe it's it's open to okay. the public. So if you wanted to, that you could. Okay. But there's not. I don't. I don't think that there's a designate. I mean, that it would just. No. Be, yeah. Exactly. 
they're really fast. I mean, when they, they have multiple state and, and national register items, and so it's, it's if you <laughs> went, you would wonder. Stamp and go, stamp and go. Stamp and go, and go. yeah, by the time <laughs> it gets there. It's not, it's not slow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the most important thing, I guess, is that all, any comments or is it get probably 15 days prior to May 17, so this will be the commission's comment. May 2nd or, or whatever. We'll probably send it a little sooner than that. One thing I found interesting is the photo, and it was on page 40 um, of the handout. Um, the drawing that was now open for business, there are kids going on. The photos of it actually being opened the, that particularly particular year, no staircase. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that was around the era that Fresno was putting storm drain systems in and bringing things up. I wonder how that played out because looking at the drawing, staircase, and looking at the photos. Under the staircase. front entry, there was a step, front entry, step yes. up. Oh, okay. Yeah. It never existed. But now it's a flush entry. Yeah. That's the same thing we learned on the printing. Yeah. Press. Repel the old, the print. Yeah. Repel yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can see the entry. Mm -hmm. Hmm. One thing, just observing the, the details because the description might have been okay because it had a grand uh, staircase before it was actually built. Didn't design it aspect only. Now was at some point taken out. <laughs> yeah. Comments or questions for staff? Hearing none, open it up to the public. Comments or questions for the public? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, we approve the drafted letter addressed to the Shippo uh, with no additional comments. Second. Except for the one. Yeah. Except, Except for the one. Yeah. 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 I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And so you just let me know when I can come in and sign that? Uh, sure. Um, if you like, we can do so after the meeting, if that's more convenient for you. Sure. Sure. Happy to. Um, all right. So then we will go back up to the continued matter. Following the Historic Preservation Commission's consideration, review, and direction to look further into nine noted potential historic, potential historic districts and areas or themes of interest on Monday, March 26, 2018, further information was gathered in order to assist in the prioritization of movement forward with previous surveys that have been conducted. The nine noted potential districts and areas or themes of interest are as follows in no particular order the Brick Warehouse and Office Building District, Yosemite Avenue Local Historic District, Fresno Hitching Post the Maddox Historic District, the Maddox Survey of Blackstone Avenue, the Maddox Survey of Shaw Avenue, Chinatown Historic District, Terrace Gardens, St. John's Cathedral District, and Historic Warehouse District. Following the Historic Preservation Commission's uh, consideration, review, um, and direction to look further into these nine noted potential districts. Um, uh, further information was gathered. Um, all survey materials were gathered that pertain to the noted potential districts. Um, critical information taken from those materials for each included the survey year, whether it is contiguous or discontiguous um, or thematic if a district record and DPR survey forms have previously been completed, comparison of contributors to total properties, uh, the number of listed properties included, uh, the degree of development pressure, the need for intensive survey, and the need for a reconnaissance survey, 
and this table reflects the initial findings. Um, there's also a printout in case this is difficult uh, to view for anyone. Um, staff is seeking direction from the Commission regarding the status of potential historic districts and historic surveys according to the initial findings. Um, for the previously noted nine potential districts and areas or themes of interest. Uh, I've also prepared an interactive map in case uh, that's helpful for the Commission. Uh, to look at as we try to uh, prioritize which districts to look further into. And with that, we can zoom in on any of them, see issues identified, what properties within those potential district boundaries are already on the local register and, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> very helpful tool. Very impressive use of Google Maps, too, I might add. Yeah. I have no idea. Is there a certain area the commission would like to start? Well, I certainly appreciate the three you've identified, but you know, as we said, the low-hanging fruit. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. That it just seems um, logical to do what can be done um, with the minimum of effort to get the <coughs> recommended. Those three. Are you referring to um, the so brick, brick warehouse? Warehouse and office district, Yosemite Avenue, and historic warehouse. So what that does is it allows us to go pretty quick on some of those, right? Mm -hmm. And um, while putting these others in the queue to mm -hmm. and in order. To, to, to yeah, at least identifying what has to be done so that right. can also go forward. Now, China, Chinatown Historic District, I saw that one as a need for extensive survey, no. Uh, and the forms have been filled out because we had the high-speed rail stuff, right? So that could also have been I, think, I think that could be added pretty on that quick list as well. Mm -hmm. It definitely has development pressure. Right. Yeah, good point. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get those going so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preserve. <coughs> <the area. coughs> Grading any further? Mm -hmm. Now, does that put us at a um, position of? Okay, now we have or essentially that can go quick. What do we do with the other um, bunch? I mean, do we prioritize and organize those on which we should put in the queue? We can maybe step on out. You know, uh, we, we've done, the city of Fresno's done surveys. I don't know how many they can handle a year, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there a timing aspect we need to know about that as well? And um, I, I would say that if, um, if some of the higher priority potential districts that come out of this, um, this workshop haven't been subject to a, a, an intensive survey like, like Chinatown and some of the other ones, then there will definitely be, you know, um, 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 you know, uh, just resource management that has to happen in order to make that happen there. Um, um, sometimes these things can be done in house. Sometimes. South NS, you need consultants, they're big areas, there's a lot of 
work to be done. There, uh, you know, we've been successful in the past uh, getting um, CLG grants to help fund some of that. Um, you know, so um, the um, the the more of the work that's already been done up front, like some of these, then the less that that's an issue. But if there's something out there that hey, you know what, this is top priority. We know we don't have a lot of the work done yet. We're going to have to find those resources, apply for those grants. Then, you know, that can change the pacing, perhaps, of how we're able to get to things. But um, if if it's a high enough priority area and, and that is deemed worthwhile by the commission, then we can start looking at how those those um, resources can be obtained and, and try to find ways to, to make that happen. If there are some that, hey, you know what, this is our top priority, and whoo. The work's mostly done. Then that that's a different, possibly quicker path. It just depends on on um, kind of how you guys weight these things as you try to figure out your priorities. Well, the brick warehouse and office and the Yosemite both have less for development of pressure, whereas Chinatown and historic warehouse have more. I would suggest that um, we go for the more first mm -hmm. and the less, and then the remaining ones also prioritize according to more as opposed to less pressure um, yeah reasonable. yeah I, I agree with that because Yosemite is going to there's so many individually designated properties there it's mm -hmm. not as high a priority it's self protected it's, it's yeah self protected mm -hmm. and, and so it's mm -hmm. set those that have the, the pressure on them yeah. Yeah. I was um, I was interested to discover with the Yosemite that um, within the boundaries that were drawn in the North Park survey, there are actually only two of those that are listed in the local register, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> but is it possible more of those are heritage properties? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, do you want to zoom in on that area, Lurk? Because the, uh, the legend, you know, you've got a different symbol for the two that right. are already so designated, but it wasn't quite apparent in the, in the printout. Sure, yeah. Because of the resolution. Yeah, so they're the, instead of the little tabs, they're the circles with the stars. So it's the one at the, the northernmost property, and then one, um, the. Um, so this one's the John almost Humiston. the southernmost. Home. And then the uh, Thomas uh, Cow Cowan home. I don't disagree that hitting those uh, other two districts up while well, we have um, a lot of uh, development going on helps, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. uh, helps those areas a, a lot more, helps those districts mm -hmm. a lot more, mm -hmm. helps um, mm -hmm. helps us be cautious around those, those areas. I, I would bubble those to the top two priority myself. Mm-hmm. So do we agree that Chinatown and the Historic Warehouse District then be the first two priorities? And do you want to follow that with the Yosemite and Brick, or do you want to look at the ones that have more developmental pressure? I'm pretty big on Yosemite uh, okay. as a residential mm -hmm. True. area. Yeah. Okay. So we got number three? And then, um, it, I mean, certainly the historic context for the mid-century modern is very useful. Um, I, I would like to sort of put a plug in for the, there was one on Blackstone, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there's, um, there's a, uh, Fresno Metro Ministry is, is uh, launching the, um, something they call the Blackstone Design Challenge probably in a year, year from now. It, and it would be really helpful to have some kind of a survey of, all the mid-century modern buildings of note along Blackstone to help that whole effort that could lead to some kind of broad sweeping revitalization of Blackstone. So, um, Seems like good timing. I don't think those buildings necessarily are in jeopardy because there's not a lot going on in Blackstone, but it would be nice to have that as a resource for that effort. Well, the city's working pretty diligently on other and other 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> frankly, you know, with the general plan focusing on infill and, and putting the BRT line there, the, the effort is to revitalize that corridor and frankly, you know, create development pressure because it's kind of underutilized out there. And so, um, you know, um, on most sites, hey, there's room for plenty of new things and what's there might not have much value, but there's stuff out there that does. And so identifying it ahead of the pressures that could come because of those policies would would probably be a good thing. I think there's there's more than what's on this list. I think there's a number of really great Bob Stevens buildings yeah. on Blackstone that aren't on this list. So. Mm -hmm. And that was one um, that does need the intensive survey. Yeah. And that could identify those. That's a, that's, big, that's a big project. <laughs> yeah, big, it's a big project. That's standard that's on the um, discontinuous district. The Bob Stevens. Um, I'm not sure. Did you? I don't. I'm not that? sure it's been noted as a potential district, but that's something we could look further into. Um, the Matic district for Bob Stevens. Yeah. I think there's more than just Stevens there. It's, yeah, it's, mid, it's mid century modern. Okay. And Stevens yeah. is a major contributor along Blackstone, but there's there's other, you know, fine works that aren't just his. Yeah, but Stevens is all yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah. There's also a, this firm Armet and Davis. They've done a lot of the sort of those roadside motels. They were known throughout California for doing those and there's a couple of Armet and Davis buildings, uh, hotels on uh, Blackstone that would be worth oh, Well, is, is our goal to like just put them on a <coughs> number in order here? Can we continue, continue to do that or? Um, well, I mean, we're, we're here, at, you know, um, um, kind of seeking direction from you all. So okay. um, the nine that <coughs> were presented for you today were nine that came out of last month's discussion <clears throat> as something you guys wanted to learn more about what study had been done, what has already been identified, and, and, and so that's what we're attempting to do today. So we have no preconceived notion about what the output of this discussion ought to be. If it's, hey, we've got our one, two, three priority, <clears throat> that'll keep us busy for the next couple of years. Staff, let's start working on those. That's fine. If you want to rank all nine of these so that we have a, a longer term vision for, you know, how we want to prioritize these and kind of march through them over, over um, the next several years, then that's fine too. So we don't want to kind of presuppose how you all are wanting to approach that. We wanted to supply information so that you could um, have a good good um, discussion and give us that direction. I say top four. Yeah. Okay, well we got the top four then. Yeah. If we don't, <laughs> if we don't um, categorize all nine, is there the chance that the other five fall by the wayside and get lost to history? I'm wondering if we can keep those as a continued item on those. Yeah. Those yeah. Other five. I don't yeah. know the resources uh, mm -hmm. already um, looked at. Okay. okay. So. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the, this is probably a list that we need to look at annually oh, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and update and reprioritize and because our develop, development pressures as we know them today are going to be totally different than five years from now and so we might want to swap around and look at Should we discuss criteria that we use to categorize them? It should be more than just, oh, I like the buildings over there. Well, there, it, yeah. it's, you know, the developmental pressure. Yeah, so that's, that, that's, yeah, okay. that's a, a plus in the, you know, in the plus column. Right. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we've got two things going. We've got the ones that are, we can get done quickly. Mm. That's a plus. And then the ones that have developmental pressure. So those would push things up to the top. <coughs> so what I have. I right think if we got to a place where we got to say, let's make it a district because I do like them, that would be a good <laughs> that place was, to that be. Would yeah. Be, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, given. The, po the card that we uh, got a copy of that you sent out about things that have disappeared in Fresno, uh, Chinatown would be a good start mm -hmm. uh, since it doesn't seem to require a 
a lot. Right. Right. I'm uh, thinking about property owner request and how long the Chinatown, Kathy Amachi and Man of the Roof have, have sought some form of sort of relief and designation. Right. And mm. so I, I, I'm all, all for moving them pretty far up, up the list, mm -hmm. if not the first on the list. The first on the list, <coughs> okay, I, I would agree. <coughs> Chinatown followed by um, maybe Historic Warehouse, uh, warehouse yes. 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 Yosemite, and then starting to work on, the focus on the Blackstone identifying properties. Mm -hmm. Does that work? That would be great. That's good. Yeah, that's what I had marked down too is what I was trying to <laughs> glean from the discussion. So that seems to make sense. Okay. Well, just for the public's knowledge too, we're, we're talking developments. We're not, uh, we're not trying to uh, make way for development. We're no. trying to uh, help what we have that can right. be in jeopardy. Right. Because development is, 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 uh, growing in those areas, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure the resources that are there right. uh, are going to be there for a long time to come. So yeah. that's the things just that are at risk. Things that yeah. are at yeah. risk. Yeah, I, I could add to that, you know, um, you know, working on preservation and downtown revitalization, both, I wear both of those hats, and they're not mutually exclusive, and um, the only way to have no development pr pressure in these areas would be endless sprawl, and sure. that's not anything any Everybody wants, right. and by revitalizing these areas, you do get some development pressure, but you also get greater economic uses for these buildings. And um, you know, um, it, you know, if <coughs> cities like Detroit or you know, or any ex example, you know, the, the lack of any viable economic use for buildings, and we've seen this here too. That's the most dangerous yeah, thing right. yeah. for these structures. So you have to be on guard and, and be ready and and do the, the hard work that comes with that, but um, bringing some life back to these areas and, and having to uh, have these kind of conversations means we're infilling and we're revitalizing the core of the city, and in the long run, that's good, as long as we, we have these kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Also, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, if there's a scenario where uh, for example, the, the first three are of the size that can be done in-house, and you can program those in-house, so we'll say those those one is so ginormous that we can put that out. Mm -hmm. If we can identify, I mean, we don't have to wait four years to put mm -hmm. that out. If we can identify that mm -hmm. it's too big to do in-house and kick it out, then, you know, that one, it, it's fourth in the priority, but because it's going to be done outside, we can get it done, get it started now. So I, I assume it's... I assume mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time to get yeah. it going. We might, mm -hmm. the, the smaller in-house ones probably get done faster now. Mm -hmm. so hey, have, oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to just kind of maybe put a plug in for uh, the Hitching Post thematic district, which I think probably could be the most at risk because people just don't know what they are and they're easy to dismiss because they're small and they're not contiguous mm -hmm. right. and mm -hmm. um, they tell a story you know, part of our story that's significant. They're spread out, and so you can miss them. They they take a lot of different forms, and so if they're not in our priority system, we already have, I believe, what, Lawrence, 16, mm -hmm. um, uh, that we have identified. But I think it's it's all an easy enough process to add to that thematic district after we identify the initial ones. But that could be the the hardest to explain, particularly to our council, mm -hmm. uh, but then one of the most significant after just spending six days in New Orleans where mm -hmm. they know exactly how many hitching posts they have <laughs> and they're all protected. Uh, every single hitching post in that city has historic preservation protection. And I just, I had hitching post envy. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have, uh, you know, almost this many. Um, but all the different types and shapes according to the socioeconomic class of the people who had, who owned the hitching post. And so um, if, if not in the top four, you know, I'll make a bid for number five um, for hitching post. And it's, a lot of that work has been done. Mm -hmm. A lot of and them are in the public right of way too. Yeah. Meaning the property owner is city of Fresno. Yeah. Oh, you know, which changes the dynamic yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's why we freak out at the Mutes home. 
<laughs> you know, when they're doing anything on the street. Right, like, right. Oh, you've got a hitching post there. A couple. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Got moved from Fulton. Mm. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, oh. those are weren't original there. They were. Oh, that's right. I didn't know they that. They were on Fulton. You could get it started with the 16, and it could be like a Where's Waldo of historical yeah. preservation. <laughs> <to try laughs> and see how many more we could yeah. find in town. Let's put out the word. Well, if there's consensus that that ought to be um, a number five, or because it's a smaller bite, put it at the top of the pile, or you know whatever you guys want to direct us to do. Yes, <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> Maybe Can I put it at the top? I I hate to put hitching posts ahead of Chinatown, but I'm going to put them pretty close because it's 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 more doable, right? It's, it's more doable. Smaller you can do it. That's yeah. for sure. Do that. It doesn't it require a geographic. It could be the number one that hasn't been surveyed. How's that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. By that criteria, that would be Jason, five. that would be number, that would make it number four, I think? Uh, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. Because <clears throat> we've got three. Was it Chinatown? Well, Chinatown, Historic Warehouse District. Yosemite. Um, well, then surveyed. Yeah. And then we go hitching post and then mid country on Black Point. Yeah, hitching Black post. Yosemite. No, Yosemite? Did you say Yosemite? Yeah, Yosemite's, Yosemite's there. there. Yeah. Now it could go in conjunction with yeah. our timeline. Right. right. It's so not like we, can, right. we can't We're start one until right. the other right. one is completely it's not tied linear. up and, right. and done. It could be the first non surveyed mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. piece. Yeah. <clears throat> I had a question. We were talking about uh, economic viability of these projects. I'd like to ask a question of the gentleman who owns the uh, Elia home. Had that house been listed before you bought it, would you have still bought it? And would it have changed your opinion or your attitude about its viability? Uh, I'm not sure if I would have or would not have. I probably would. You know, I actually did a lot of research on this house before I bought it. You know. So I may have done the research, like I said, I, I went and met with uh, Aaron Blair, who's very familiar with this, you know, a lot of downtown stuff, and he knows Dan. And so maybe, you know, had I known that it's not as, you know, it's not that obviously not that big of a deal for what I'm doing in the property, I may have bought it, sure. So it wouldn't have uh, killed the deal. But that's, but not for me personally, but I could see how it might scare others, because I have heard the sentiment from other people of, oh, no, if you don't want to do historic, they won't let you do anything. It'll be, <coughs> they'll be up in your business, you know. I don't know. It, that's the sentiment I get. Yeah, and, you know, well, this is what I talked to them about. It wasn't that big of a deal. They mostly want to keep the windows similar and the siding similar, and we can do what we want besides that, you know. It's, it, they, it wants to, it, everybody wants it to look the same, you know. But I could, you know, you could paint it neon green. It doesn't matter. Like it's, it's the the architectural details, which we're trying to keep anyways. That that you guys want to see, similar, mm -hmm. but the same. You know. Okay. So we have our commission. Promotion on that. Well, we have to open it up. Do you want to read the list and? I can read it. Can you want you want to go ahead? <laughs> so I understand that you have a top five right now. Number one being Chinatown. Number two, the historic warehouse district. Number three, Yosemite. Number four, Fresno Hitching Post. And five, thematic survey of Blackstone. Checks out. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and we'll keep our fingers on the pulse mm -hmm. of the other ones and move them up as mm -hmm. as we can. Yeah, I think your suggestion to revisit every year and just sure. keep an eye on it, um, and then we can update it as we go. I think that's a good good suggestion. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep track of it and bring it back to you. So we'll do spring cleaning of the <laughs> list. <of> the <coughs> Perfect spring cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. All right, uh, I'd like to open it up to the public for comments or questions. 
state your name and address if you would please. Uh, my name is James Sponsler. Uh, I am the owner of uh, the Joseph Cowdery Home, 330 North Park Avenue, uh, historical property number 33. And actually, I just wanted to uh, add on to uh, what Paul had said, is that initially uh, nobody knew the history uh, and even knew that my uh, the ho house that I bought last year was actually a historical property until I actually brought the information forward to my realtor. Um, and actually what it has done is it's actually made it even more enjoyable uh, for uh, myself and my wife and my family um, where we're taking, making the active effort to uh, retain the historical aspects of the home. In fact, try to expand on that so that we know uh, the additional items uh, of the home and, and things like that um, to really build a better uh, uh, build a better history of that home. Um, as well as to make sure that we keep with the historical elements of it, as well as the historical paint colors and things like that. So it's something that um, I think uh, the, the, the districts that you have here um, and the ones that you've listed as a priority are good priorities. Um, and, and I would say that uh, job well done in deciding on the, on the, uh, the numberings of which ones are going to go uh, first or uh, be selected. Thank you. Any other comments? Come on up. Real quick, real quick. Uh, George Hostetter, 730 West San Ramon here in Fresno. Um, I'm just wondering if possibly the um, commission could uh, explain why the Shaw Avenue um, possibility wasn't picked and why Blackstone was. Um, just looking at the districts, um, it seems like those two are, are Shaw and Blackstone are um, unique. Uh, the uh, average reader might say, I understand the hitching post, I understand Yosemite, uh, but um, you would not think maybe Shaw Avenue would merit your concern. Uh, and maybe there's something, a teachable moment there uh, to the public as to one, why Shaw Avenue is one of the nine, and then two, why it's not one of the priorities. Thank you. I think Paul, you Paul uh, gave a reason. Oh, I think the, the I, I agree. I think there's, there's notable architecture on, on Shaw as well as Blackstone. I might argue that the notable pieces on Blackstone may be older than Shaw. Shaw, I think, kind of came of age in the sort of 70s, whereas Blackstone has a much longer history, and I think it has more examples of a wide, broader range of architectural styles than you might find on Shaw, so that might be, in my mind, a, a compelling reason. But the another the, the reason I, I I guess pushed for was there is a uh, a nonprofit group here in Fresno that has four architectural local firms that will be putting some very very intense study into Blackstone, um, and the outcome of that work hopefully will be used as a a template or a guide or an inspiration, however you want to describe it, for people who think Blackstone is dead and should be forgotten. So what we want to do is demonstrate how um, the general plan combined with uh, the BRT line can bring about an entirely new urban context on Blackstone that kind of defies what people think is possible. And I think that's a daunting task. It's, it's compelling. And had there been the same kind of effort or project that was underway on Shaw, I probably would have said, let's look at Shaw. But because there's something happening or that's going to happen on Blackstone, this study will really help our, our work. Yeah, we appreciate thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. It's our finest hour. Hi. <laughs> Jeremy Clark again. Uh, I concur in everything you were saying. I understand that um, the impact from potential development uh, really is one of the highest priorities and that things will go slow until they go fast and having these things in place is correct. I just want to, uh, some questions on the sort of the devil's advocate side. So some of these things such as residential developments, Terrace Gardens, which I'm a resident of, even though I'm already on the historic re register. Um, the question is when do we, when or I get 
I get the the pri priorities and the, the possibility that it's just difficult, but in the meantime, I mean, really, these are districts that I see are things that should be done, but for the economic pressures we have, um, what can we do as homeowners to sort of, you know, do we have any protections when, I mean, again, I know these are pretty well intact, but we keep on going forward, you know, for example, if a home, you know, another homeowner decides to tear something down, really, what, what defenses do we have? Mm -hmm. what, can, what can we do? Because obviously, uh, very much for preservation, and it seems um, difficult to, you know, something where you can see it should be in place, <coughs> but it's just not because, well, it's present. Can, can I respond? Yeah. 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 Okay. Wilson Island, the Porter Track, and Huntington Boulevard all became districts because the property owners, the residents, asked for it and pushed for it over and over and over for Dan knows for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and they organized, they had meetings in the neighborhood. I went to meetings in all three of those places with neighbors. Uh, if, if the neighbors want a district, um, this commission will listen to that, does listen to that. You, you want to move higher up on the list? Um, not necessarily. I mean, that, I agree that, that I mean, I, there's, there's priorities. I, I hear what you're saying because yeah. I, I lived at 1208 Terrace for, oh, fantastic. Uh, for five years. So. Yeah. Um, I, I know, but it takes, if, if the residents want this, that's something that we listen to. Uh, and that's also something that makes it easier for council um, to determine if the residents say uh, we like this. This certainly was important for Huntington Boulevard, even, you know, in, and, and that wasn't an easy one to do. Uh, but the three largest residential ones that we have, the first ones, all came of a, a about because the residents pushed it. Got it. And and as I said in the beginning, yeah, I totally agree with the priorities that as stated. So, thank you. Also, you when you know if a house is over fifty years old, and a de demolition permit is applied for, it comes here first. Fantastic. That's great. Good to know. Thank you. One one good thing is is even with that time, though, uh, you can do some things that maybe the Huntington folks weren't able to all collectively agree on, and that's get a neighborhood on the table gets right. to hear that way you know I don't want my house listed I do and uh, and then it creates a much broader challenge so um, I would I would hope that uh, the anticipation of hey this is on the list we're <coughs> we're going at it um, uh, gives time for the residents to unite together and sort of uh, come up with an, an idea uh, that they want to be and uh, not feel like they're gonna lose ability to do a remodel or something like that down the road so use that time to educate uh, the residents and, and get them excited about what it means yeah. well one small thing that might help is more informational packets and the like from the city I know there's things on the website but it does seem like there's a lot of just misinformation about the registry anyway thank you Yeah, right. I mean, if we're doing, if we're doing Mills Act packets, we're doing all the civil settlements, basically, you know, the footwork. And if we got, you know, citizens who, you know, want to take, take over and start walking door to door and getting the eyes and nays passed out and have information that they can pass out at their fingertips. Historic district starter kit. Yeah, exactly. That's right. The benefits of a historic district. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do we need to make a motion? No, this isn't an action item. Right. The consensus that you guys and the direction that you have given us is the, the output we were hoping for and, and is sufficient. So um, if unless you guys wanted to um, discuss it anymore, I feel like we have what we need to proceed and, and uh, um, start uh, getting to work. That's what awesome. Good. That's great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Okay, well that concludes our concluded matters item. There is no chair person's report. Unscheduled items, members of the commission, any unscheduled items? Mm -mm. None, staff? Unscheduled items? No. I have none. No. General public, any unscheduled items? Anything you <laughs> want to add? 
<laughs> he wants to make lol a, a historic district. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, James. <laughs> All right. Right, right, right behind you. J James Sponsler again. Um, actually, I, I, I do have something that's actually completely not even related to the topic of, of, of the house or, or anything like that. It's actually something uh, um, uh, that I'd like to know if I could get uh, some assistance from the commission. Uh, I'm actually a volunteer with the Boy Scouts. Um, and uh, actually we've identified that one of our original office locations was at the corner of L and Kern Street and we'd like to be able to see what we could do about uh, getting in contact with the, uh, the property owner and placing something uh, to note that um, with the idea that um, next year actually marks the 100th anniversary of the Sequoia Council uh, which represents the four counties in the area here. Um, and, and that would be uh, uh, very neat to be able to uh, commemorate that uh, as an option. Did the scouts build the building originally? Or they, they did not. They actually occupied the, the first floor, in fact, uh, where the current Charburger is, was actually their office. Um, and, and so they've only, the only building they've ever built <laughs> uh, here in the city of Fresno is the one they currently occupy, which is actually near uh, Bullard and Marks. Um, but the ones that they had uh, been in the past, uh, one was actually a historical property itself, and that was the uh, 1095 North Van S uh, property. Uh, however, it, it did was brought to our attention that in about uh, 1919, when the council started, their first office was 701 L Street. Mm -hmm. James, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Hotel Virginia. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a, a one of the ground floor uh, retail spots uh, just about below the hotel there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the general public? Hearing none. Next meeting, May 21st, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations.